sets the people back. In his last few when he went to read, he used to understand the people well, and particularly he understands the look, the apostle, understand the female folk and the people who are sick. So in his last few, a lot of stories, a lot of true stories will be there. And he will be as a doctor very meticulous about certain things. So he has written in his last poem about Jesus' death, when it happened, how it happened. And he used to give every detail. And we know very well from the Gospels, and particularly from Luke's Gospel. He said Jesus died on the cross at about 3 p.m., the third hour in the afternoon. When he died, as a doctor, he also noticed that a lot of things happened around. There is the heaven open, there was a thunder, there was a storm, rain, and he said the church also in those days they used to have in the temple a long way, a screen that is to show that it is fully according to other places for the people, like we say, sanctuary and altar and other views. Uh, Likewise, in those days there was a way to separate between the Holy of Holies and the people's place. And our Lord used to say when Jesus died at the time of the Trinity, the way torn down in between and it was open. That is to show that Jesus has opened the Holy of Holies to the people. So I say these details are given in the Gospel of Luke about Jesus' death. And today we know very well the person of heaven. Helen May died at Diamond Trivia. When she died, we can see the same thing. There was a thunder, there was a storm, and everything. This happens why Jesus always glorifies the people who follows him. And in the today's gospel also, Joseph, the name Joseph is mentioned. It is not the pastor father of Jesus, Joseph, Saint Joseph. It is son of Joseph who was in the council of the government. He was the righteous person and he was the true person. It is said in the last. How he got his glorification, though he was in the middle of the government, will be high. He was a righteous person because he followed Jesus, so he is glorified in the last one today. So Jesus also says, Whoever believes in me will be with me wherever I am. We know now Jesus says, Die for us, and he is sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And Jesus has promised to all the people who believe in him, You will be with me wherever I am. So today, our Helen will be as a righteous person who believed Jesus, who lived according to the gospel, is living with Jesus. Why is it? Because I own the background of the family. On the six days, the father will work. Seventh day, father, mother, and everybody should be in the church before they are taking their meals. So that was the question. And this question, this practice in the family was brought up by my mother. We know very well by our mother in law, by her sacrifice, she has shown the faith to the family and to others. And today I am also surprised, even who all of a sudden are here. This is not just for the family who come, it is, I can understand that they were brought up in that way. When we go to the altar, you have to be like this. Getting near the altar is a blessing. So this kind of practices, how it comes, it comes from the time. From this small action, we can understand how great Alan was. Today, we have to remember that. Jesus always says, over the years in me, will get will be with him. So today let us thank God for giving us such a person. At the same time, let us also pray for her 
that she may continue to pray for the family as she was very much dedicated, a loving mother, a loving person, always caring about others, always ready to give something whenever she needs somebody. More than that, a smile, always a smile that people make others happy, either by smile or by food or by jam. She has made everybody happy. So let us also pray to her as she was on this earth, carrying for her own people in the community and family. Let us also ask her today, Helen, as you are next to Jesus sitting there, I can pray for the family. Pray for us, pray for the whole community, so that we may follow you, we may follow the footsteps and the death as you have by Jesus. Jesus also commanded his spirit to the Father. Now heaven has given a spirit to the heavenly Father. So let us also pray to her so that we may get the same grace. We may During this prayer time, during this mass time, let us also pray to the Heavenly Father to give her eternal rest, eternal happiness, and eternal peace. And spend now the rest of her. Now pray for the petitions. Baptism and how to receive the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and leave her over the waters of death. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Helen was nourished and nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly name. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, peace. And rise to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Helen seek comfort and consolation. Mm-hmm. Heal the pain and dispel the darkness and the doubt that come from breaking. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith in confidence to pray for our sister Helen. Strengthen our hope so that we, we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, give our peace and give our souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer of Jesus Christ and the voices of the people gathered here, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the land. Forgive the sins of our mother Christ. And grant her a place in your kingdom. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The fifth hour is then you go on to read the text.
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis also, and William our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Helen and Sophia, whom you have called today from this world to your side. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Welcome them in the light of your face. Our mercy on us all gathered here to be free, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may learn to be quiet as eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for him. Let us stand and pray as the Savior, Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from your name. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the us of hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give. Look not on the sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and pray forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us ask each other the sign of peace.
Those who want to receive the communion kindly come in one line in front of the altar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Sophia Elizabeth Abramchik Neiman was one of two children born to John and Magdalena Lada Abramchik on June 8, 1928, in Hamtramck, Michigan, a suburb of Detroit. At that time, John Abramchik was working for Ford Motor Company. On October 28, 1929, a brother, Chester, was Always living on the farm, Magdalena did not like living in the city. So when Helen was three years old, her parents moved from Michigan to a farm in Butler, Wisconsin. The land was sandy and not clear, and there were no buildings. So together they walked, built a house and barn, and started farming. John's brother, Angie, helped by giving a few of his cows, pigs, and chickens. There was no warning, running water or electricity. When Helen was five years old, she started school in Eastside, walking two miles each way. The school had classes for all eight graders. Later, her parents moved so Helen went to Golf State Grade School and later caught a bus and went to Florida High School. After graduating, Helen went to Chicago with her cousin. Sophia Kushik. Sophia Kushik was working at Western Electric, so she started working there too. After two years of living in Chicago, Helen met the love of her life, Ralph Ann. One year later, they made wedding plans. Helen and Ralph were married on May 7, 1949, at St. Edward's Country Church in Fort with Father John Herner officiating. Uh, Ralph was working in Sokoff, Chicago, so that's where they lived for 25 years. To this marriage was born seven children, Ken, Darlene, Janice, Deborah, Ronald, Denise, and Karen. The factory where Ralph worked was closing, so they decided to leave Chicago. Being familiar with the Rock Dam area, they bought a house and moved there in 1974. Their final home together was in the city of Florida. Helen was the last surviving of Ramchuk from that generation. Now, I would like to say something personal about a wonderful mother. Mom considered all her sons in law and Sue her children. Mom had a big heart. Mom was always cooking a meal, breakfast for kids. Lunch for the kids as grammar school was a block away, and then a 3 p.m. dinner for Rob before he left for work, followed by an early dinner for her children. As Janice and I were dating at 15 and 16, I was quite often peeking into the pots to see what Mom was cooking. We especially looked forward to Sunday meal following Mass. There was often a long roast with mashed potatoes and gravy, a vegetable, a fresh fiber from the neighborhood baby. Summer meals always included lettuce and tomato from Mom's garden. Sunday evening meal would consist of leftover rum roast and chef fire from spaghetti. <laughs> On the subject of food, Karen's husband Jeff asked, asked that I get the following. Jeff said Mom was always so lovely, even the first time he met her. She gave him a hug. Jeff said his favorite memories are surrounded all the delicious food Mom made. Whenever the meal was wrapping up, Mom would come back to him and fold her hand and say, Here, Jeff, you might as well finish it. There isn't much left. <laughs> Jeff said he never turned it down, and Mom felt, uh, never turned it down and felt Mom enjoyed feeding him and everyone else. It was another way that she showed her love. Mom was strict on tradition. We all had new clothes to celebrate Easter Sunday. After Easter Mass, it was always eager to have our Easter breakfast with colored Easter eggs, polo sausage, butter lamb, beef horseradish, which Mom prepared, and of course, the baby bride. All which had been placed at the church on Holy Saturday. Many evenings would consist of family and crazy eights, war, scats, and 500 rum. I think it was Darlene who introduced the spoon game. Mom did not have one 
the school in that house that was not that. <laughs> Mom and all of us looked forward to the summer vacation, which meant we were heading to Florida to stay at Grandma Washa for at least a month. Mom loved being with her mother, and we children loved running over our Chester's farm to get some sort of mission with the Abacha cousins. When we weren't at the farm, we were at Grandma's Creek or in the apple tree. Every evening, someone had to climb that apple tree to the tree with the salt shade. We would end the day playing Tom Tom and Tickle Tackle, as the adults sat at the porch, chatting us, and scolding us for training the grandma's feeding plants. There was always a couple of project leaving trips to Rock Dam for Crook Island. Mom and Grandma and Aunt Debbie would put together a feast of rods, hot dogs, homemade potato salad, fresh vegetables from Grandma's garden. When the men were fishing, sometimes it was bottle plants, the woman would try to keep the nine and nineteen children jumping off her hair. I guess God was watching the world, either Mom nor Aunt Betty could swim. <laughs> Our cookouts usually ended stopping on the roadside to pick berries. It was an adjustment for us when Mom and Dad and Karen moved back to Rock Dam in 1974. It was our first Christmas without them, and we were all alone. Going forward, we spent Christmas together either in Wisconsin or Illinois. Karen was fortunate to have more one on one time with Mom and with her siblings remaining in Chicago. Mom and Karen took walks together, picked pussy rolls and berries, and had a special, a special peaceful connecting moments. Karen called the evening trying to sleep on the deck, but were chased inside by an assistant with the little bird that landed on the road and refused to leave, even after they lit firecrackers. Karen and husband Jeff spent the last couple of months by Mom's bedside. His mind was trying to follow another stroke. Karen wrote these words, which I would like to share with you all. I always knew mom was unique, and she was a very special, very special to me and her family. What I didn't realize was how special she was to other people, specifically all her caregivers. The past few months, mom's verbal communication diminished, but her ability to communicate with her eyes. Eyebrows and smiles increased. She did not have to say that the same thing. You know, they were looking at her, what she had felt, what she was thinking, and how much she loved and appreciated. Even when mom stopped most verbal communication, she still managed to say, Thank you, and I love you. In last week of mom's life, she showed me how to pick up control of the situation. By itself, with complete dignity, grace, and humility, she accepted it and she surrounded it without losing any power. If anything, near the end, she gave more of herself to those who were around her, just as she did in her life. Mom had a special life, and she touched so many people purely, simply, and beautifully. Thank you for sharing this with us, Karen. Mom's smile and gentle nature will always hold a special place in our hearts. In conclusion, we cannot thank Carmen and Michael Bunchek enough for being with Mom and Mom and Kirk. Carmen visited often and made sure Mom was comfortable and loved and was at Mom's bedside with Karen and Jeff when Mom cashed. She always gave us an update which we needed. Michael often brought along a dog, a father's dog, Dirty, which Mom greatly enjoyed. Thanks also to go out to the pool and better project who visited frequency, bringing freshly made banana. Janet and Richard Project were always able to locate Mom's misplaced keys or pick up a prescription. Thanks to all of our cousins who visited Mom, and to Ed and Cora Kusha and Sister Rose Krakowski for spending time with Mom. These visits meant a lot to her 
and we appreciate your kindness. Lastly, we want to thank the caring staff at the home place for not retired for five and a half years and to all of the attendant service on the Thank you. So thank you, Bill, for your good words. And I come to know that you all together have given a good factor to that, taking the record and the special stage. So I thank the whole family for being together and continue to be together. I am being this one spirit. May the spirit be always with you. Okay, today I'm also well and the daughters and family members. Uh, losing heaven is not only for you, it is for our lives also, it is one of the greatest uh, loss for us. But we are with you, we pray for you, we pray for heaven, and we pray for your family members. As a sign that we are with you, the parish is praying for you and heaven. I am going to light a holy candle in this paper. And the holy family is that this when people see that they know who has died because the, uh, the prayer card is kept there, so people will be knowing. We are praying as a sign that we are praying together. I'm going to light the holy candle from the past to back. And as I light the candle, I will say the whole punishments and you three times day. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Bless her in her summer, and bless is your Lord, the Lord of Jesus. Holy Mary, the Mother of God, pray for our sinners, and our Lord for them. Amen. 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 Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Bless her in her summer, and bless is your fruit of the womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Mother of God, pray for our sinners. Now and the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of Thank you. 
Thank you. 